Today we're going to take apart a regular GM 5.3 liter V8. Now this is not out of a full size truck or van, but instead it's out of a trailblazer chassis vehicle, which is called the GMT 360. I can tell this by the type of oil pan it has. It has a mid sump with a hole in the center for the all wheel drive system to bolt to. Um, this is completely locked up. I don't know anything about it other than the fact that the place I got it from deemed it to be unrebuildable, which is good for me in one sense because I get them a lot cheaper. This engine was very cheap. In fact, once I sell the oil pan, everything else will be profit if there's anything else to sell off of it. Uh, this is a LH6 RPO code engine. Uh, this, they made this engine from five to nine in that chassis. They also use that RPO code in the seven up uh, full-size trucks. I don't know why they reuse that RPO code. The engines are not the same. Um, it is a 58X engine, which means it has a 58 tooth trigger wheel. And I can tell that by the way the timing cover looks. It also has displacement on demand and active fuel management, which is likely a big reason as to why it's here in the first place. Uh, this engine has no plugs, no intake. There's not a lot to go off of but uh, hopefully we get some good parts out of it. Uh, I'm not gonna be using an engine stand today. Again, most of my V8 engines that tear apart on tables like this are actually on the front of my forks. I just don't film that. Um, this is, it's much easier to deal with these engines on a table like this. I have forklifts to move things around. Uh, engine stands just get in the way. And uh, anyway, let me show you what we've got. So from all appearances, this looks like about every other 5.3 that comes in. Uh, it's got Cathedral 243 cast heads. Uh, this should have flat top pistons in it with no valve reliefs. Um, and I can tell that this is a 7 to 9 motor uh, by the timing cover on uh, it's 5 and 6 LH6s. Uh, they're a little bit different. Those are 24X or 24 tooth trigger wheels and they have a different front timing cover but they are interchangeable. Um, anyway, we're going to go ahead and pull the other valve cover off and make this symmetrical. Uh, there's really no damage that I could see with this valve cover off. So uh, we're going to start on the other side and we'll go ahead and get that head off and then work our way over to this side. Well, they certainly change your oil on time. So aside from being incredibly oil varnished, everything looks like most of these do. I don't see any broken valve springs. Uh, it's just really, really, really dirty. So let's go ahead and get these rocker arms off and stand out of the way and uh, see what the push rods look like. Now I typically don't use an impact on the rocker arms. It's very easy to strip them out. It's also uh, very easy to break sockets. I've learned that the hard way. So I break them loose by hand and then I use the impact on them. That push rod doesn't look quite right. It's actually a little shorter. I don't know if you can see that in the video. But, so there's some issues going on there. That one looks all right. It's usually the cylinders with displacement on demand that have issues with push rods and lifters. Not always. All right, let's go ahead and get these head bolts out. Hopefully this doesn't turn me into Miles Davis today. It's already pretty loose, so. Well, well, it was clear to me that this had sat outside for some time, or at least with water in it. I don't really know whether it ingested water. We won't know that yet. Um, but I see this on a lot of locked up cores because people take the engine out of their vehicle, whether it has low oil pressure or maybe it's got low compression in a cylinder and the shop just sets it out back behind the shop out in the rain and um, I guess nobody cares after that. So eventually when it ends up in my hands, I'm the one that's got to get this rust knocked down enough to turn the engine over so I can get it apart. It ultimately makes the block pretty much worthless. I mean, 5.3s just aren't worth uh, the machine work typically. I've got plenty of bare blocks here, but we'll see how bad this ends up being. The head, uh, no signs of distress, just signs of water like everything else. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get to the other side and let's see what we can find.
So these push rods all look pretty decent. Nothing obvious yet. Go ahead and tear the head off. See what we got. Oh, of course it's leaking. Makes no sense. How can one side be bone dry and the other side still have coolant in it? Another Felpro head gasket. And bunches of rust. So as you can see, it has an aftermarket head gasket and one cylinder that must have had the valves open while this was sitting outside or somewhere where moisture could collect. Also, not a proper head refinishing job, I can tell. Um, but I don't see anything bent. Uh, I won't know if anything's cracked. Heads look pretty, it's pretty rough, but nothing that won't clean up in my, our parts washer. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the lifters out. I have already removed, I did that before I pulled that last head, I removed the valley pan cover. It just gets it out of the way. I, I throw those all away when they're from DOD and AFM engines. They're, those are trash. Same with that aftermarket head gasket. But let's see, see if we can see what the uh, lifters look like. If they come out. Here's two of the DOD lifters. They look all right so far. They're usually really apparent when there's a problem. This one's got some line scoring on it, but nothing crazy. It's usually like the bottom of them is blown out, the roller's gone or halfway worn through. Those look all right. And I just toss these things. I never reuse these. These are all trash to me. They all look good, but they're all going in the trash. It's just best to buy new ones. All right, let's go to the other side. Nothing yet. So those just came apart. That's not supposed to happen. This might be our first indicator here as to what is wrong with this engine. Or maybe the lifters just came apart. Rollers look good. So I don't really know why that happened. All right, so no major lifter damage. I know those two did come apart. That is a problem. Um, I don't really see any reason why they would have come apart, but uh, I don't, nothing's beat up in that area. So I think they just, they, were, they might have been bad, but they're not bad in a way that caused this engine to be a core, at least not in my experience. For those that have seen my videos, you guys all know what's next. We're gonna go ahead and put the engine on its tail. We'll go ahead and take the oil pan, the pickup, and the windage tray off. We'll inspect both the pan and the pickup for debris. And then we'll start getting the rods and pistons out, which ones that we can get out. And hopefully by that point, the penetrant that I sprayed in the cylinders will have broken down the rust enough for me to be able to spin the crank over and get the rest of them out. Well, there's no pickup. So that kind of sucks. Let's go ahead and get the windage tray off and see what we can find. So the pan is pretty gross, but we expected that, right? I mean, look at the way the rest of the engine looks. And much of the same here. This is just really oil varnished. But I don't see, there's nothing terrible yet. Nothing obvious, I didn't see any bent rods. So let's go ahead and get the rods and pistons out that we can get out. 
and see if we can get it to turn over. Oof, that doesn't look so hot. Well, now that I've got two out and a couple of the outside rod cap bolts loose, I can actually turn this over just a little. You can kind of hear it scraping the rust, but it definitely won't go one full revolution. So we're gonna go ahead and get the get some more out, and uh, then we'll fight the ones that are all rusty. So I've got that cylinder soaked. I actually used some uh, scotch pad to kind of break up the heavy stuff. And we're going to spin the crank back and forth and use the, rate, the weight of the rotating assembly to kind of push the rings through this. I know you can break a piston doing this. I get it. Uh, I've never done it. That, I've never had a problem doing it that way. So we're just going to spin this by hand. And hopefully that ring will cut all the way through it. There we go. Ah, I really hate that they set these things outside. So now we're gonna go ahead and get the rest of the rods and pistons out, including that cylinder. Now that this spins all the way over and uh, we'll inspect the bearings at that time. So after a quick Break clean bath, you can see that these bearings are rough. They are smoked. This thing definitely had low oil, low oil pressure issues or maybe just low oil issues. Um, turns out that you need oil to have oil pressure. So maybe that was the issue. Either way, uh, I think we're on to what, why this engine was removed in the first place. So the crank is a little worse for wear. I can feel scratches and gouges in the journal that cylinders one and two where the bearings look the worst uh, we're gonna end up trashing the crank i know you could probably turn it and run oversized bearings but five three cranks are a dime a dozen so there's really no point now that we've got the rods and pistons out i'm gonna go ahead and, and tilt the engine back down we're gonna get the crank pulley off get the timing cover and timing components out so that we can get the cam out and inspect that So that's a first. Timing tensioner just exploded. Well, the guides just exploded. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, get this cam out. See if it comes out nice and easy. So 
So when we inspect the cam, it's less about the actual lobes. We, we could assume that those were all right when the lifters came out okay, but it's more about the, uh, the cam where it sits in the cam bearings. This one, I can kind of feel with my thumb that it's a little grooved. Uh, the center ones are the ones that are the worst off. Not terrible, but um, it's, it's likely that this engine had, low, had oil pressure issues and that's what chewed up this as well as the cam bearings. We're still going to go ahead and get the crank out of it. But here I'll show you the cam bearings. And you know we can only see so much of the cam bearing here. Uh, the outside cam bearings look all right. You know, they're not perfect. Uh, they, they really never are at this point. Um, this is about average, uh, I must say, but the cam is a little more worn than I'd like to see. Now that we've got the cam and all the timing components out, the last step is to pull the crank and inspect the main bearings and see what kind of condition those are in. So as I suspected, the main bearings closest to the oil pump do not look so good. It's actually kind of thin on the outside edge and there, you can feel some definite grooves in it. They get, uh, well, they're kind of bad almost all the way across. They're nothing spun. There are some grooves in the cap bearings as well. Um, you can feel them with your fingernail. And when you look at the crank, you can also feel them. The crank is trash. This engine definitely suffered from low oil pressure. So the block actually looks, dare I say, all right. Certainly not ready to go. Uh, it's going to definitely need some machine work, but it is a usable block. You could do some machine work to it and use it. It's probably going to need, what, five, maybe ten over. But it's not as bad as it looked originally, and that's usually what I find. I usually find that the rust looks atrocious until you actually go to start pulling things apart and you soak things in penetrant and you get the rods and pistons out. Those rings do a really good job at cleaning out the, uh, the tall stuff. But it, it does leave staining and pitting behind, which will need to be addressed. So that really wasn't too bad. In fact, it was much better than I expected. I usually expect some catastrophic failure inside of these, especially when I get them for as cheap as this engine was. I actually got a lot of good parts to sell, so I'll do quite well. Uh, as far as the oil pressure issue is concerned, uh, I can't say that I've never seen that before. I've seen that on a lot of Gen 3 and Gen 4 engines. I've seen spun cam bearings, spun main bearings even, and of course rod bearing issues. Uh, I don't think it has as much to do with the design of the engine as much as it does to do with the people that own them. I, I think some people are religious with their oil changes and some people change the oil when they remember, which is way too late. Uh, you can tell this one uh, definitely had deferred maintenance. It's varnished really terrible, but not the worst I've seen. I hope you enjoyed this teardown video. Uh, if you'd like to buy parts for LSs or for some of the other engines I've torn down, I'm going to have our email in the description as well as some of the tools that I use like the crank pulley puller. Uh, as far as the next teardown, I'm going to tear down an engine that I don't like. Um, I try not to have my opinion on these videos. I, I'm pretty neutral as far as these engines are concerned. The reason I do LSs and Hemi engines is not because there's so many abundant, terrible engines. It's because I know those markets. Well, I also know other markets and well, I really don't like the next engine I'm going to take apart, but hopefully you'll join me on that video and I'll see you next time. Oh, and if you're wondering why that engine was missing a pickup tube, uh, some of the places I get engines from kind of inspect them and take them apart to see if they can get them unstuck and they don't always put the parts back. That's not why I didn't have low oil pressure. It wasn't missing the tube from the factory. That's just what I've learned to expect when I buy some of these cores.